W's and L's, a weekly recap show where we give a dub to the things that we like and an L to the things that we don't. Going first. You went first last time. You want me to go first. No. You do? Because you went first last time and I had to. I had well, to do but some... last, you. How did you not know that you were going to get that last week? That, that, there goes that Ohio State arrogance again. Well, no. You had to know that you were going to get that last week. I knew you were going to give some dubs and L's to Michigan. I didn't know it was going to be the whole fucking thing. Fam, how did you not? How, how did you I not? I just didn't foresee that taking place that way. Better foresight. You, Maybe that you, can benefit you I, and your team. I thought you'd have more sense. If if Buckeyes had more foresight, they would have been able to see that Quentin Ewers was going to get the fuck up out of here after he got that million dollars. That doesn't bother me that much, though. It don't bother me at all either because if, first of all, a million dollars is a drop in the bucket to what Ohio State football pulled in this year. Let's not even. Well, he was not, paid that money by Riker. By Riker. But I'm still, <laughs> he only got it because of Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. But in, but transitive here right Mm -hmm. in retrospect he helped bring buzz and butts to the seats in a horseshoe this season so a million dollars he's worth whatever someone's willing to pay him and actually Riker gave him a million dollars and a truck so nuts and he drove that bitch right out Columbus (laughs) right but he was never going to get any real playing time you don't know that what happens if Stroud goes out and he's the reason why you lose your first two games next year. Then you're going to be looking for the next guy up. We'd you're going to be Kyle, like, oh, next man up. We'd have Kyle McCord right after that. You think Kyle McCord's better than Quinn Ewers? He was the second guy, if I'm just going off well, of Well, also, Ewers didn't get there until, like, July. so He didn't know the playbook. McCord was there since the since the spring. Sure. So he had, a, he had, like, a six-month head start on Ewers. So then there's the possibility that he would have been the second guy. He still would have had to, do, to wait a, at least another year for C.J. Stroud. And then there's we a four-star. We four don't know star, that. There's a four-star coming in. Trevor Lawrence and, and Kelly Bryant. We don't know that. Shit, Spencer Rattler and Caleb Williams. We, have, we don't know that. It's not 100%. I'm, yeah. just saying, I'm just saying he would have been probably behind C.J. Stroud. At the very least, he would have started next season he behind been, Stroud. He would have been yeah. behind a guy who had Heisman hopes this year mm-hmm. for another year. And then you have a four-star quarterback coming in next year. I don't. I don't think that that's a foregone conclusion because here's the thing: wherever Quentin Ewers goes, he's going to want to compete for a national championship, right? So the situation that he just left is not going to be any better unless he just goes to like a nothing team. He goes plays for Miami or some shit like that, so he can rack up stats. It sounds like he's going to a Texas team. He's okay. Going back home. So if he goes to Texas, I don't think it's going to be Texas though. I think it's going to be Texas A and M or TCU. I think. Texas A&M has a quarterback. So does Texas. I don't know about Texas Tech. Or TCU. Or TCU, yeah. I don't know about either one of those teams. But why would you leave Ohio State to go to Texas Tech or TCU? That's on him. Well, I can, he's from I can Texas. Understand, I can understand why you would go back and play for Texas. Right? I, you, you're not going home to play for Texas Tech because you want to be home. That's, that's bull. I think any of the Texas teams he's going because he wants to go back home. Right, but then who does and he, he, knew. he ultimately end, He's going to land on something like, Texas A&M or Texas because those are the premier programs in his state. He's not leaving he's Ohio to Texas, State to go fuck with TCU. It's if not he's happening. going to Texas, then he's got to wait anyway. He doesn't have to wait. See, you are assuming that Quentin Ewers is of the mindset that he can't go out there and compete and win a job. He could have competed here. He could have, which is why I'm asking why he left. That's not. It's not even in my doves and L's. This is not my topic. But I also like to add that wherever he goes in the South, probably – you know, we 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 let go of talent, unfortunately, because of the situations. But mm-hmm. then they go on to become uh, Jamison Williams. They go on to become Joe Burrow. Sure, sure. So have fun wrecking the SEC or whatever conference you end up playing in, Big Twelve or whatever. He's going to Wisconsin, bro. He's definitely not going to Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin is further from his home, so that'd be nuts. First up, the Will and Jada petition. <laughs> for the for the lowly souls who who had the courage to do this, I applaud you for doing what I could not. Because boy, am I sick and tired of hearing them talk about they 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 relationship, they sex lives. I'm trying to remember the last thing I heard Will Smith say, and it was just like, bro, shut up. That he hated Tupac because of the relationship he had with Jada. He and once pranked like, he once pranked Jada by showing one of her sex scenes to his grandmother. It what? That's was one of the articles I saw, one of the more recent ones. To his grandma or her grandma? To his grandmother. That's not a prank, fam. That's not a prank. Bro. 
What if what if Will and Jada are passive passive aggressively jabbing each other through the media and we just see it as like why y'all keep saying this is like it's like your parents arguing in front of you for the first time like oh no stop stop this yeah no they they definitely need to stop it's just, it, it really is funny because Will and Jada is that it couple right they're the relationship goals couple at least before all this shit started happening um they were at least and so now that all of that veneer has worn off Man, people want them to shut the hell up. They're like, stop it. You're ruining our relationship goals. Stop. You're too real. Stop. Stop. It would be one thing if Red Table Talk was out and Will Smith was doing something that I guess needed attention, which I guess King Richard, but King Richard doesn't need any it of this It doesn't attention. need any of this. It doesn't. And there is no Red this. Table Talk, so there's really no reason for any of this to be happening. Like, why are y'all offering up all this? Per- That's why I think they jabbing each other. I think it's, it's some beef. Because why That's the, the hell? Thing that makes sense. It's literally the only thing that makes sense. They're at eleven. They're over eleven thousand signatures on that petition. <laughs> I'm about to sign it. I, I, I'm about to find it. I'm like, stop immediately. <laughs> Let's make it twelve k. Run it up. My next three dubs are going to be very petty, but man, were they delicious to see. First up is going to J.K. Dobbins for being a. Being a a, 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 a a good sport and owning up and paying his bets, wearing that Michigan jersey with his coach, John Harbaugh, seeing J.K. Dobbins in a Michigan shirt and not running into our end zone, it was just beautiful. It was. Thank you for that, Coach Harbaugh. Thank I you. I mean, good job being a man of your word and yes. paying your debt. Yes, thank you for being a man of your word. I would never make that bet because and getting a that Michigan shit on shirt wax. would make my skin burn. But <laughs> getting that shit on wax. He was cheesing. He looked like he was happy to do it. Yeah, that was kind of weird. He had a big old smile. Come here, John. Hey. Like, whoa. You think relax. I can go back and, and play as a grad student? No, he would never do that. I mean, maybe. You see how excited he got? He was smiling. JK, yellow was. is a good color on you, man. No, it's not. Don't let this man lie to you. Paul Feinbaum. Oh, my God. Paul Feinbaum. The quintessential Michigan John Har- uh, Jim Harbaugh hater. Shout out to Paul Feezy. Oh, my <gasps> God. Yeah, shout out to Paul Feezy. You know why? Because he got on Get Up this week and told uh, – it was either Get Up or College Football Final, one of them, and told them that he would cast his vote for who for Coach of the Year? Who are you going to cast his vote for? Who? Go ahead. Let's say it together. Say it. You ready? On three. One, two, three. Trash Jim Harbaugh. That's fine. The hurt is still all over you. We can all see it. It's there. I just want to interrupt this really quickly because the uh, the signatures are actually over 19,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I just made it 19,001. God damn. Oh, I'm not chipping in. Paul Feinbaum, more. Michigan's biggest hater. Voting for Jim Harbaugh as coach of the year? Oh, man, y'all got to stop. Y'all got to stop, man. Y'all sending aid into New York. We didn't want the Big Ten. It's too much. I can't take it. I can't. I'm going to have a heart attack. Gross. Did you already sign this? Go ahead and put me on there. No, I'm going to send, send you the text oh, so okay. that you can get the link. Yeah, yeah, I'll sign it for sure. We got to make you 20K. My last dub was the, the creme de la creme. The filet mignon, the main course. Nothing could have capped off Saturday night after Michigan pummels Iowa for the Big Ten Championship game. Nothing could have topped it off any more perfectly than this. With Aiden Hutchinson being handed the Big Ten Championship MVP trophy by who? Two-time Heisman winner, former Buckeye. Archie Griffin. And you know what the Michigan faithful did when he handed it to him? They booed the hell out of him in Indy. They booed the two-time Heisman winner, Archie Griffin, as he's handing the MVP trophy to Hutchinson. You cannot sculpt a better moment for this year. Like, that is just beautiful. That is like if Charles Woodson had to hand C.J. Stroud the fucking Big Ten Championship trophy while being booed by the Buckeye faithful, that would be the worst moment of my life. So to see Archie Griffin, the most legendary Buckeye, bar none, give Hutchinson the MVP trophy for the Big Ten. Oh, I can die and go to heaven. Perfect year. Perfect year. Not done yet. 
Job's not done. So far, perfect year. Mwah. Mwah. Thank you. Are you done? I got an L. Oh. This I just one's not Michigan you, related. I just wanted to give you an update. This thing is probably going to hit 20,000 by the time we're done with this. It's really, it went from 11 to 19, or you just hadn't refreshed it? No, it was, at, it was at 19, but it's at 19,692 right now. People really don't want to hear this anymore. <laughs> Brian Kelly's getting my only L this week. Oh, yeah, fuck that nigga. Because for some reason, when you take a flight from Massachusetts to Louisiana, you develop a southern accent. It's a great night to be a tiger. I'm here with my family, and we are so excited to be in the great state of Louisiana, but more importantly, to be with you great fans. I can't believe this grown-ass man got up in front of all them people and pretended to have a fucking accent. Sounding like Foghorn Leghorn. He was doing his best uh, Ed Orgeron impression. Ed Orgeron is from Louisiana. I know. He Cajun. Yeah, it's legit. Like, it's, it, it's there. It's legit as fuck. You know what I mean? That's Coach O. <laughs> You're from Boston, fam. <laughs> you from Boston. You just spent the last 12 years in, in South Bend, Indiana. There's nothing Southern about you. You came with three jars of helmets packed in your carry-on to drown out all the Cajun food. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. No way that a brother with your level of paste sounds anything like that naturally. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, oh my God. It just adds to the disingenuousness of Brian Kelly. By you, Kelly. I can't believe that man did that in Notre Dame, <laughs> man. Crazy. He did that dirty. That is crazy. Shout out to Marcus Freeman, though. No, Another facts. black man getting a job. Facts. Sure. Let's talk about my dubs. I want to give a dub out to Drake. Drake finally ditched the heart in his hair. That wasn't already him. gone? No. No, he was still rocking it for a while, but he finally ditched it. Okay. Yes. So I'm very happy about that. Back hopefully. To a, back to adulthood. Hopefully, the fuckboys out there can stop doing it as well. <laughs> I, I hope. I'm also going to give a dub to the family of Casey Goodson uh, because Jason Mead, the person who unjustifiably shot and murdered him as he was going shot into his four home, times in the back. is now been indicted. He turned himself in, and now he's been brought on two counts of murder and one count of reckless homicide. Yeah, definitely glad about the charges. It's just another one of these cases. Thought you were going to get a little bit of reprieve after the uh, the Rittenhouse and Aubrey trials were over. Yeah, we're right back into another one. As far as Andre Hill, there are updates in that. I guess that is starting in March. So they've already been charged. The officer's already been yeah, charged. He was charged right? sometime, I think, in the summer, maybe. Late summer. Or no, maybe it was October. Um, but that's starting in March. Um, and then this one is going to start probably sometime after that, I guess, you know, months after that. But it's good to at least see that things are moving forward. I'm definitely happy to see that. Um, hopefully these families can get justice. Now the only other thing to do is charge the murder of Makai Bryant as well. That has not been done yet. Uh, so hopefully the investigation can go favorably and that person can be brought up on charges. I believe his name is Nicholas Reardon. Is that the is that the girl who had the knife? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to see. I'm pretty sure they're still doing an investigation on that, and hopefully, like I said, hopefully charges can be brought up on that as well. Um, but like I said, I'm happy for the family of Casey Goodson. I know uh, his mother has been doing interviews and stuff like that around the city. So, you know, hopefully, like I said, she can find some solace in the fact that at least the the process is going forward. Keep her up, y'all in the city. Put your arms around her for sure. You know, this is going to be a long. Long process for her and the family, and uh, you know it's 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 going to be a lot of outside influence saying a lot of things about you know about Mr. Goodson and and, and, and trying to paint him in a certain light, and, and and that's that's if you know the family, if you know her, uh, it's it's definitely a time to kind of put your arms around her because it's it's going to be a whole lot of BS that rolls into town when this when this case gets kicked off for sure. One thousand percent, and um, it's it's almost a year to the day that it happened mm. uh, because they you know they laid him to rest uh, a couple of days before Christmas, mm. and so you know like I said, hopefully this um, 
this brings some positivity to the situation. Now, hopefully, they can get closer to justice. So, we will see. And we'll definitely keep you updated as well. On to my L's. I am giving an L to your boy Lil Boosie. Lil Boosie bad ass. I think it was sometime last year or in 2020. Yeah. Where Lil Boosie was caught wearing a Kappa sweater. Ah, yeah, I remember that. This time. He put on an alpha jacket. Look out, check this out. And I know I look good in this jacket. Remind me of uh, the great Dr. Martin Luther King. Oh, so he doing this shit on purpose. Put on the alpha jacket and said that he's offering money to different fraternities for some internet challenge he's got going on. But he put on the alpha jacket, which... Is also a no-no, and hopefully he doesn't make his way through all the fraternities. Cause Being Greek, I feel like we ask so little of our people. I, I I feel like we ask so little of our of our people in that regard. Don't wear our shit if you didn't earn our shit. It's it, that's simple. That that's not a hard thing to ask, man. It's just don't put that shit on. You want to offer some money to some HBCUs? Fine. Put that shit up in the background. Put it in the case and and, and stand next to it while you didn't. Even, don't put that shit on. Don't put that shit on. But then again, that's not my org. You know what I mean? Just like it, when it wasn't when it was the Kappas, it wasn't my org. So, if it does become your org, I don't think that'll ever happen. Was he gonna have to run fades? See, the one thing you got to learn about the IOTA is that we are we're the we're the newest fraternity, right? We don't have as many of those older, esteemed, and in historyed members, right? Uh, the prestige. Like we definitely have. Our founders are, are some of our founders are still alive, and we have older members. But like the veneer and the allure and the the huh, you know of of historic black fraternities, like it's just that's not that's not us. Like you, you you'll get some pause put on you. Damn, they gonna run Boosie's favorite niggas. Niggas might find Boosie walking around and and and, and get tuned up. I, I, it, it may be some niggas that's, that's that reckless. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm not. It's it's not the most. Civilized bunch. Damn. My next L is going to niggas who lose their mind whenever "When I See You" from Fantasia comes on, because it's a good song. "When I See You" from Fantasia is a good song. Not here to say anything bad about that song. It's even a classic song. There are definitely better R and B songs to go nuts over. And niggas can't go mind. crazy over "When I See You," bro. "When I See" that's the song. If you're going to choose a Fantasia Barino song. But why are you choosing a Fantasia song? Because Fantasia can sing. But why Fantasia? When I see you, see you, when I see you. Niggas don't go that ham over a Mary J. Blige song, but they'll go that nuts over Fantasia. What Mary J. song we talking about? How about Down? I'm going down. Yeah, but niggas don't go. Okay, so I'll give you the fact that they're probably not going to play that in the club. No. But I don't see niggas going that uh, going that crazy over. Let's get it crunk up on that fun up on up in this dance arena. It's a merry song that niggas will go crazy over. Uh, the fact that you have to think and Fantasia just. It's not a Mary J. Bly song, but it's a song that niggas go nuts to. What's the shit? Uh, is that Taylor Swift? Making my way downtown, walking fast, no, pacing fast, and I'm Swift. homebound. That was way before Taylor Swift. Who is that? I don't, I don't know who it is. I don't remember her name, Some white woman. Yeah. The white chick song. It's inconsequential. But yes, th- another song and niggas go crazy over. First of all, I, I think they go crazy over Fantasia now, at least, more than that song. I think that song has a longer like, reach. Yeah. But in this concentrated era. Considering that I have literally never seen this before you ex- explaining it you to have, me today. You have. Remember Reem showed us that video of him at. Some club. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I just, I don't understand why that's the song, niggas. I, like, I feel like that's low-key basic. Like, niggas don't listen to R&B that much, but the one song that they know. Why are you hating on people's love of Fantasia? Like, what if they really just rock with Fantasia? Or, or Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole is a perfect example of somebody that has songs that niggas should be going ham over. Niggas do go oh, ham over. okay, there, there's, there, love. There, I was going to say there's one song. Yeah, there's love. They literally, but that don't ring off on the, at the club. OT Maybe Genesis, that's what it is. Maybe that's OT what it is. Genesis. Maybe that's and, what and it is. And I, I, I no niggas go ham over. Niggas I think I spent go. seven years in Akron. I know they play love at the end of the club. 
Niggas, no, niggas definitely, definitely played in the club. Never knew what I was missing. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Sierra club. Body Party. Niggas went crazy over Body Party when it came out. Um, what the, the Carrie Hilson song that came out? Um, when Carrie Hilson was still relevant. Yikes. What song was that? But don't even hate then, me because I'm beautiful. Niggas went nuts over that song. Niggas was going nuts over that. My walk, my talk, the way That's I dress. Crazy that niggas are going fault, crazy don't over hate, don't pretty hate girl me rock. I'm, yeah. Bro, do that, not sit that's up here crazy. and act like niggas was not singing Pretty Girl Rock. Nah, you, when it you came had up. it with the Sierra and the Keisha Cole. I, I've never heard the niggas nigga was go nuts. definitely, it, they were singing the Miley Cyrus shit. It's a party in the USA. This whole, this whole phenomenon of niggas picking female songs and going nuts over them, is, it's a thing. It's been a thing. But the other songs you've mentioned are actually great R&B songs. And, and, and. The Fantasia songs. Some of them are. The Fanta- Oh, I'm sorry. The, yeah. I, I, I was about I, to I say meant the Keisha Cole are. and Sierra songs. All right. But I don't put When I See You up there with Love or uh, Body Party. Then that's your preference. Leave Fantasia alone. She's been through a lot. Anyway, uh, the last L that I have is going out to Bone Thugs in Harmony. Damn. I'll let you get the Damn, busy, the busy. busy bone part of it. Yeah, man, come on, man. I know you think they desert wor- devil worshippers and stuff, but you know you got to chill the fuck out. He done threw the water bottle at these niggas and the mic. I I don't know where too. Now Juicy J did say suck my dick, but like I he mean, was obviously what? kidding. Like I I don't think that should have been taken seriously at all. And he's got into a whole fisticuffs. And then oh, Gangsta Boo in the back is like, Busy Bone is a hater. He a hater. <laughs> crazy ass nigga. You ain't take your pills. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yeah, um, no, that was nuts. Definitely an entertaining versus though. Uh, but one other thing I got to give Bone Thugs the L for is not playing first of the month. Yeah. Come because on, what? Come on, bro. What? You know what we here for. You know what we came here for. A lot of guests came out. Fucking Young Buck, Lil Flip. Who else? Lil John, who else? Uh, Eight Ball and MJG, who else? Project Pat, who else? Terrence Howard. Ah, I told you he came and did the thing. He did the shit. He did the shit. I fucking knew it. I swear to God, I am the king of predicting shit on versus. Y'all have to go back and look on the shits we predicted every fucking time. Yeah, Niggas be nah, saying that, the most outrageous shit. Predicted that, was, that Romeo was gonna come out during the Soldier Boy and, and Bow Wow versus. What the fuck happened? It happened. I told you, Terrence there. Howard was going to be coming out there. I'll whoop that trick, man. What'd he do? <laughs> he did Just it. hire me. He did it. Just hire me versus. Okay. So, if, and we'll talk about it, obviously, in a, in a separate video when it comes out, if it if it's the next one. Mm. Rumors are that Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown are going to be the next one. Okay. Who brings out who? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. That is gonna be. Does Lil Kim bring out a Biggie hologram? <laughs> oh, okay, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. I'm that's not, not happening. That. Mm-mm. Why not? No, no, <laughs> no. You want her to get fucking booed at a versus? I don't think we've seen anybody get booed or at a versus. Or does she bring out Rich Homie Quan again to do Biggie's verse? That shit was nuts. I will fight her. It happened. Where, before. Did, where did that happen at? Uh, VH1 Hip Hop Honors. She brought out Rich Homie for Biggie's verse. That's who that's that's it. All them years in the game. All them connections made. Not only did she bring out Rich Homie, Rich Homie fumbled and forgot some of the lyrics. That was a good time in hip hop history. No, it wasn't. Any other dubs, L's? Got a clown why uh, YK Osiris for giving home performances to pay off his debt. Yeah, bro. Like is this a rollout? <laughs> like, what no, is- it, it's not a rollout. You know what it is? You see this shit all the time in, in groups of friends. Like, you got a little nigga. Everybody has a little nigga. YK Osiris is everybody's little nigga. He's Drake's little nigga. Which is weird. And Why so is like, YK Osiris Drake's little nigga and Lil Baby's little nigga and Lil Boosie's little nigga? Because and also he's, not getting, he's literally the young nigga, so he's everybody's little nigga. But he's also not getting features from any of these niggas. Well, here's, here's the thing. Sometimes when you have a younger, weaker, less established person that's part of the clique, part of the group, you believe. You believe. Okay. I don't know what it is, but it it's like it's almost like a coming of age, right? It's, it's like 
for some reason they feel like they preparing you for something by ridiculing you constantly. Yeah, they're making you. You see that shit stronger. all the time, and so like and they do it in very public ways so that that everybody knows what the situation is. Mm-hmm. Right, it, 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 it's not done maliciously. It's not done out of spite, and they definitely gonna tell you all oh, you being soft. If you if you feel a way about it, if you if you get buck about it, so it's almost a guarantee that it's gonna get off because you're not gonna fight it, mm-hmm. right? And I, I and I obviously have the the upper hand in the relationship here for sure. So they they embarrassing this cat. I don't know why he's signing up for it, and but why does he, he owe he them just, so much money? They probably bet him on shit that they know he's gonna lose on, <laughs> just so that they can do this bullshit. I bet you don't come out with another single. My fam got a problem. <laughs> he only and got they one over single. here extorting him so that they can get laughs and shit on the internet. I bet you don't come out with another single this year. And he hasn't. So now he has to pay up. Like fam, they over there convincing you that it's all jokes and it's just it's ha 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 kiki. Do you think we would ever do you think Drake would ever allow someone to record him while they talking to him like that? No. Ever. No. Ever. Fact, I think that's happened. Oh yeah, you know, Drake, you owe me sixty thousand dollars, and I perform in my house to pay your debt off. He, man, what? Hey, you know there's some tapes of uh, Jay Prince bullying that nigga. I, hey, look, it's got to be some crazy voicemails. He shut that man's mouthpiece down in the middle of a rap battle, so I wouldn't put anything past him. I'm just saying. Um, That's but yeah, no, man. YK Osiris is just looking crazy and. I hope this all becomes something for him because Yeah, but that shit that shit's not funny, fam. Like they're embarrassing you. They they treating you like a little boy. Like does he come out with a single based off all of this pain and trauma? And yeah, you called? you said it the best. Like you yeah, at least with all of this money you giving to these niggas, you at least they could give you a session. Give me an hour in the booth, fam. Can I get a 16, please? Help me. Help me. Nigga. Me. Give us your weekly dubs and L's in the comments below. Tell us what you want at, what you lost. Tell us. And make sure you check out our playlist full of W's and L's uh, recaps that we do throughout the week. And make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check us out throughout the week.